Now I've got a problem with my pit bike. I don't want to demonstrate it because I don't want to cause any damage or make the problem even worse. So the problem is the kickstart. It seems to be slipping or jumping when I try and kick it over. Um, not quite engaging properly, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, what happened was I went to go out on the bike, tried to kickstart it. It seemed to jump a cog or slip, you know, and I thought, whoa, that's not good. Tried it again. It was all right. Tried it again because I, obviously I knew there was something was happening and it just seemed to slip right round. Although now it's, it, it, well, last time it was still firm. I didn't want to do it anymore because you start losing metal in there, go into your engine, you'll have an even bigger problem. So I was a bit disappointed I couldn't go for a ride. The only option is to solve this problem. I've already made a start on the job. I've removed the foot peg, brake lever, kick start and clutch cable. Next step, I'm just going to lay the bike on its side so I don't have to take the oil out because when I take that clutch cover off, it's going to pour out otherwise. So the bike's in sit bay, it's in the operating theatre, it's in a good working position now, let's crack on. Now then, I've got the 8mm T-bar and we're going to remove the clutch cover. To get the casing off, it just needed a little bit of gentle persuasion. Now we're in here, I'm going to have to put it in gear and take out the clutch basket. And we're in. I had a little inspection before I picked the camera up just to see if I could see what the problem is or anything like that. And I can see the problem. I'm going to go over that. But first, when I was in here, I got my magnetic screwdriver around and I did pick up a bit of shrapnel. So I do need to change that oil. Hopefully that magnetic plugs absorb most of that. Anyway, first of all, this cog. Not sure you can see on the camera but it's very worn on the inside and there's some that's really worn here you can see there's probably a third of the teeth missing a few teeth might look okay but majority are damaged now we go on to the main shaft one that to me looks i can't see any damage or wear that's a good job because if I have to replace that one, I'll have to take off the side casing. Well, split more of the casing. That's not such a bad job. It's pretty easy, but it's just more time consuming. So I'm hoping I can just change this one. Now I've got the kit for the job. I have this spare cog, so I'm not going to fit that one. I'm going to replace this one. And if we go over to the workspace, now over here then on the worktop, here's the set of cogs I've got, it's a kit, I'm not worried about this one, that's the one to be replaced, and this one will go in the clutch basket, not sure how I'll get that out of there yet, but I think I'll just get a socket and beat it out, we'll worry about that in a minute. So once I've got the cogs out, I will compare them, see the damage, wear and tear let you lot see but I also noticed this trying to hold everything with one hand is not easy Basically, from that, you can see it's pretty mangled. You get a good idea. It needs to be replaced. So then, when you do a job and you're looking ahead, just to check you can't see any problems and that you haven't overlooked anything, I have. I'm going to have to split the engine case in more because I'm pretty certain once I remove this sir clip, there's just not enough room to lift this cog off the shaft. You've got 5 or 10 mil there in the edge of the casing. So whilst... If I do have to take this off, I may as well replace the third cog I thought I could get away without replacing. At least then I know the job's done properly and it's got all new fresh parts. And this bike's got 56.4 hours on, so it should last a long time. I've never done this job before. That's probably why I didn't realise I would have to do that. In order to do that then... Just need to remove this oil pipe and 
these engine casing bolts. Not sure about this one, I think that does go through. One of these was longer than the other. Yeah, that one. And hopefully it should just come straight off. I haven't got time to do any more today, so, well, for you, I'll be back in a couple of seconds, but for me, it might be a day or two. And we're in. Gasket doesn't look too healthy. Not sure I'll be able to reuse that. But anyway, I didn't realise this had one of those oil catchers in there. That's like my um, Grom. Never knew that, but if you can see what I can see. That doesn't look very good. But let's get that out and have a closer look. Hmm. That's reasonably okay. I was expecting worse. Just blow that through the airline. Let's put that down on something clean. Now we're getting to the juicy stuff. Look at that. Oh my. I think that's all on the bottom of the sump plug. I'm going to take that out before I go any further. Right, I've gone a little bit quiet because that took me by surprise. I didn't expect to see some sort of bearing cases in there and a little bearing. That was the last thing I expected. That was expected, but all this took me by surprise. I thought, nothing feels loose. I can't recall anything last time, feeling like it was breaking down. Had a little think about it. And when I had this bike at the beginning, I had a valve go. The cam sprocket went, the bearings went. I can only assume that means that this has been in there quite a few years. But you would never have got it out without looking like this. Because that sump plug bolt, magnetic one, which is coming very handy, I must say, would never have been able to pull that down. So you're never going to know anything you've got floating around in your engine until you actually split it. Just wanted to show you that really because it's one of those unexpected issues that arise when you're doing something like this and it just takes your focus off the main task because you've got to sort something else in between. It's quite interesting though because that engine's got quite a few hours on it now and I know I did the valves before it's double figures so that has been in there a long time unless there is some other problem in there that I just haven't noticed yet but that 
I mean, how could you not notice something like that? So that's why I'm assuming I'm going back to ages ago when it exploded practically that that's where this has come from. When you're doing a job like this, it's all about, it's only about confidence and having a go. Because it's really, once you opened up that engine case and it's pretty obvious what was wrong. Although when you've only got that angle, you can't quite see how worn that really was. But it was definitely obvious that something here was the problem. There's quite a bit of wear on a third of the teeth. And that one is A-OK. -okay. It's just about confidence and having a go. And so far, this job's been really simple. I haven't done this before. It was a little bit daunting when you see three cogs or two cogs that are worn, but you can't, you've got to take off a third. It's like, ooh, a bit worried. But as long as you remember how it came apart, it shouldn't be a problem. While I was inspecting this myself, before I turned the camera on, I went to check I got some gaskets. And I still got the old gasket kit left from when I had to be, I told you about it when I, the valve went. I had to do the top end, put a new valve in it. So we used gaskets then and that's the leftovers of the kit about to come in handy now. So I'm happy with everything that's gone on here. Just want to remove these bits of gasket. Some of them feel a little bit stuck. So I might have to get the screwdriver edge on it and be really careful. 
Anyway, I'll be back. For that little bit I just done, that first big washer, you have to get it on there and then on that shaft there's a line around there. You have to get that on the line, turn it and then when you put this washer in with those like legs, it locks that bottom washer in position. It's all back together now. I just quickly put on the kickstart foot peg and rear brake. I've got no spare nuts or bolts. I'm quite confident this should have solved the problem, but the proof's in the pudding. So we're going to give it a few kicks and see what it feels like. Then, if it's all good, I might just give it a quick start and a little squirt. And that is a result. Everything seems to be resolved. The kick starts working fine. It feels like new. I'm really pleased because that's the first time I've done that job and it seems to have gone perfect. My bike, if it hasn't been started for a few months, 
it always does that you've just got to keep kicking it you can't give it any throttle as it just stalls you've got to let it do its own thing and then it'll just start bubbling away anyway i've really enjoyed myself making this video i've learned quite a few things I, like i didn't know that that had one of those oil catcher metal grids in the bottom there and it was quite interesting for me just to learn that also learning the process of changing the kickstart cogs i've had fun Hopefully you've had fun or even learned something and maybe we should see in the future. Moto Machines out. Just want to share a theory with you. Whilst I've been working on the bike, I have been thinking what would contribute to the wear and tear on that clutch basket cog. And one theory I've got is that sometimes when I'm riding around and you're stood up and you're moving backwards and forwards and you're doing jumps and you haven't got much space, you can find your boot pushing that kickstart back a little bit and you do hear it going zzzz. A few people have asked me what's that noise on certain videos and that's the noise. And so I'm thinking that sort of wear and tear on that cog is probably from me and my boots when I'm riding just putting a little bit of pressure on the kickstart. I do know it's a common issue on these bikes and if you've got a really bad technique then you're kickstart cogs have probably gone within 56 hours i've done 56 hours which isn't bad this was one of my first high compression pit bikes so it did take me a little bit to get a good technique and learn how to start these things but um you've all got to start somewhere i admit that but as far as i'm aware 56 hours on the original kickstarting mechanism isn't too bad